Hello, Halton Biology students. This is homework number five about facilitated diffusion and active transport. So you're going to see um, a lot of what we've been talking about this week with the cell membrane and um, the different parts of the cell membrane. You're going to see it all throughout this uh, homework video, but it's going to be a little bit different than what we've talked about so far. So make sure that you're taking Cornell notes on this. You'll be turning that into your teacher tomorrow. So your essential question for today's video is how do molecules get through the membrane when diffusion doesn't work? So when just plain old diffusion doesn't work, how do we get things through our cell membranes? Let's first just start with a reminder of what diffusion is, right? So diffusion is when molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So this is like our slide we talked about a few days ago. Um, we would start on the top of the slide. We, And we'll go down to the bottom, right? So we start at a high concentration. We start where there is a lot of something. And we go down the slide to where there is not a lot, where there is a low concentration. So we start high and we end low. So just like going down a slide, okay, just like going down a slide does not require energy, diffusion doesn't require energy. So to take something from a high concentration to a low concentration is really a natural process. So if you're squished in a room with a lot of people, when you um, get some space, you're going to spread out. Well, molecules do the exact same thing. So the first question we want to talk about is how do the larger molecules fit through? So when diffusion doesn't work, when um, plain old diffusion doesn't work and a small or a large molecule can't fit through the cell membrane like you see right here, okay, how in the world does diffusion work? How does this happen? Well, we're going to see something called facilitated diffusion, okay, facilitated. This word right here means to help. So what this is, is diffusion with help. And where do we get the help? Or we get the help from a protein channel. So we've talked about the cell membrane. We talked about how we have these proteins here, okay, that are randomly in the cell membrane. These proteins serve as channels or tunnels in the cell membrane. And so these molecules that we see, okay, these molecules up here, are going to go from a high concentration to a low concentration. But because they can't fit through the plain cell membrane, they're going to squeeze through these tunnels with some help of the protein. So they're going to get pushed through the tunnels, pushed through the protein channels to the other side where there is a low concentration. So we talked about how um, facilitated diffusion helps the molecules that just don't fit through the membrane, um, but what about the molecules when we need to go from a low to a high concentration? So how do we move molecules from low to a high concentration? Well, the way we do this is called a process called um, active transport. So if you think about it, if you're active, you have a lot of energy, right? And so this is a process that uses energy to move molecules against the concentration gradient. So, um, first of all, our source of energy is something called ATP. So when you hear ATP, you've got to think energy. Okay, we'll hit that again and again and again this year, uh, but this is one of the first places we're going to see that, and so keep that in mind. So if you look down here at this picture, we are now going from where there is a low concentration, where there are not a lot of these little molecules, these little green squares, to a high concentration. Okay, so it requires energy to go the opposite direction. Again, think about our slide over here. So if you start at the bottom down here, okay, it's going to require energy to run up the slide, right? Everyone's tried to do that, like in elementary school, and your teachers get mad at you and tell you to go down the right way. Well, you have to work at it. you got to take a running start and jog up the slide and grab onto the bars and pull yourself up, okay? It requires energy. The exact same thing is true for active transport. We're going to go through a protein, okay, just like we saw in our last slide. We're going to go through a protein, and it's going to require energy to start where there's not a lot and go to the where there are a lot of something, so where the concentration is low to where the concentration is high. 
So we've talked about how um, things are going to diffuse through proteins. We've talked about how we're going to push them through with active transport to go from a low to a high concentration. The last two things we want to talk about are what if we don't have, you know, a protein to push something through or and it doesn't fit through the membrane? Well, there are two... Um, other ways that we can get things through a membrane, and we call them endocytosis and exocytosis. And so endo, if you see that word part, okay, it means to enter or inside of. So this is when we take materials into the cell using the cell membrane, okay? And exocytosis, think about an exit, okay, is when we send things out of the cell using a vesicle, okay? So look down at this picture, and it's pretty straightforward when you start to look at it. So here, this little green guy right here is food, okay? And what it's going to do is it's going to float up next to the cell. This right here is the cell membrane, okay? It's going to float up next to the cell membrane, and the cell membrane is going to make this little pocket for it right here. It's going to make a little pocket, and it's going to turn into a little vesicle. A vesicle is kind of like a car, okay? The food goes inside, closes the door, goes in the car, and we're going to bring it into the cell. Now, in here, we start to see the cell break down the food, okay? It's going to break down the food, send it out into the cell, um, just like you do in your body. You break down your food, okay? And the remaining waste, okay, is going to get sent out of the cell. So, over here, when we're bringing something into the cell is endocytosis, over here is exocytosis as we send out the waste. So the best way to think about this, like I said before, is using your word parts with endo and exo. Endo meaning to enter, exo meaning to exit. So let's review just the two or three biggest things we've talked about over the past few days. So diffusion. This is when we go from a low or sorry, a high to a low concentration. Um, and it does not require energy. So just like going down the slide, okay, going down the slide does not require energy. Diffusion does not require energy. So one way I know I told my students to remember is diffusion starts with the D, down um, the concentration gradient starts with the D. Um, it does not require energy to do that. Okay, the next one is facilitated diffusion. So same thing, we're going from a high to a low concentration, but now we're going to use a protein. Okay, we're going to use a protein to take things from the low to the high because they just don't fit through the membrane. They can't squeeze through the lipids. And the very last one is our active transport. And this is the one that's way um, more different than the other two because we're going from a low to a high. And typically we're going to use a protein to do that. Okay, and it's going to require energy. So remember, think about going up the slide. Okay, when you run up a slide, it requires energy to do so. Um, so active transport is going to require that energy. Um, so tomorrow, most of us are going to be working on something in class where we're going to be comparing um, these three things. And in, in addition to it, we're probably going to also um, compare osmosis. And so something you're going to want to keep in mind is how are these similar and how are they different? Okay, so if you don't think you can answer that question, you don't think you can remember the essential question and, and how to answer it, you need to go back and rewatch this video. Um, maybe add a few things to your notes and feel free to draw any of the pictures you see in this video. And lastly, make sure that you ask any teacher um, for help if you don't understand the differences or similarities between these types of transports or even why we're talking about this and why this is significant. Make sure you ask your teacher.